Hi, my name is John Lamb, and I'm the program manager for Our Tools for Visual Studio. Today, I'm going to take you on a lap around Our Tools for Visual Studio that just went into public preview this week. Um, in the demo that you're about to see, I'm going to show you a bunch of different um, key features of the product. Um, one thing that we're going to look at is this new streamlined experience that we've created for data scientists. It's a tailored experience, um, which makes you much more productive inside of the environment. Um, another thing that we're going to see is how you can use the power of the Visual Studio Editor and our new R Interactive window together um, to be more productive while you are writing your code. Um, we're going to take a look at how projects are um, rendered inside of Visual Studio um, tools um, for R. What you'll see here is that the, the project system is very directory focused, which is very similar to how you've been used to using um, R in other projects that you may have um, used in the past. Um, we're going to show you how we've taken a lot of effort to make help available everywhere where you might need it inside of the product, from when you are typing a function um, in your code um, to uh, integrated help being available inside of the product itself. Um, all you have to do is type question mark in the name of the, the, the function that you want help on, and we'll display a full HTML help page um, for you at that time. As a data scientist, you know that you your primary role is to create um, reports and, and to share information and analysis with other people. Um, so we'll take a look at some of the report writing features inside of um, our tools for Visual Studio. And finally, um, Another thing that you might want to do is create an interactive user experience for people that aren't necessarily data scientists. Um, so we'll show building an interactive application using our tools for Visual Studio at the end. So now let's go off and take a look at the demo. Our tools for Visual Studio runs on um, Visual Studio 2015 Update 1. And it runs on both the, uh, the Community Edition, the Professional Edition, as well as the Enterprise Editions of Visual Studio. What you see here on the screen is the um, data science experience of um, Visual Studio. We've done a bunch of things here to kind of simplify and to streamline the user interface um, in our tools for Visual Studio to better meet the needs of you, the data scientist. The way you can do this for yourself is you come here to the data science settings command inside of the R tools menu. You run this, and this will ask you whether or not you would like to reset the Visual Studio layout to the data science profile. You say yes to this. We care a lot about compatibility with tools that you might be using already. So we also have the ability to make it so that your keyboard shortcuts will also be compatible with tools like RStudio. So now that we've got this up and running, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the windows that are available to you in the environment. We have a variable explorer. We have a history window here that you'll see as we start typing code inside of um, the R interactive window. Um, we'll start seeing things show up there. We have a solution explorer, which will be active when we have a project that's running. We have a plot window, and we also have the help window. Throughout this demo, you're going to see each one of these windows kind of come into play. But when you set the data science settings, you'll see all of these windows get created and, and pinned to these locations on the screen for you automatically. So now that we have R running, you can see here that I'm running Microsoft R Open, which is the Microsoft flavor um, of R. There's, if you're curious about the features of um, Microsoft R Open, which is 100% compatible with your um, R programs, you can come here and click on this link that we have at the startup, which will take you to a page that will show you some additional information about um, the, uh, the Microsoft R Open distribution. So let's go ahead and run some code. So this is kind of the hello world. We'll type 3 plus 3. We see the, um, um, the result 6 being displayed here. Um, we can also go do things like I can type a function. So you can see that as I'm typing the name print, we have IntelliSense that shows up inside of the product. If I hit open print here and start typing something here, down below inside of this tooltip, you can also see that we have parameter IntelliSense available to you as well, as well as you know, some summary information about what the, the print function does. So we can do the kind of classic hello world example here. We can see that it prints hello world as well. Um, turning your attention up here to our, our history window, you can see here that um, the commands I just typed into um, the, the interactive window now show up inside of the history window as well. If I want to replay one of these commands or run it again, I can come here and double click on it, or I can also type Control-Enter, which is what I'm doing now. And we took the input that we had there 
and we put it into the R interactive window down here. All you have to do is hit enter, we run the command, and you can also see that since we re-executed the 3 plus 3 command, that we also see that showing up inside of the history window as well. Now, we also have additional help available. So if there's a function that you're curious about, we can go off and type question mark and say, let's, let's read a data file. So the command for doing that is read CSV. So as I type read into here, we of course have our IntelliSense showing up there as well. I can press tab now to autocomplete against that, and I can press enter. And because at the beginning of the line, I have the question mark, when I press enter here, it says, hey, go find me the help file for the read um, CSV function here. And down here, we have our help window showing up here, which we can scroll through here and see the help. Um, this is a tool window inside of Visual Studio, so it's like any other tool window in Visual Studio. I can tear this thing off. I can maximize this thing up here. Um, if you're familiar with the arrow snap um, keystrokes inside of Windows, so that have been there since Windows 7, Windows right arrow will go off and make it so that we can make that go side by side, halfway across the screen, right? Um, and of course, when I'm done with this documentation, I can go put it back where I found it before, and I can re-snap it into Visual Studio and re-maximize Visual Studio. I can also do things like search the help, right? So if I do a double question mark inside of here, I can say, hey, go find me something about something I saw about this empty cars. And it turns out this is a data set um, that we have available to us here. So when I click here, it gives me some information about the built-in data set empty cars that's available as a standard part of R itself. So now that we've seen the interactive window inside of um, Visual Studio. Let's go off and create a project um, so we can start editing some files as well. So when I go File, New, Project here inside of Visual Studio, you'll see that the New Project dialog box appears. If you're an experienced Visual Studio user, you'll be looking at this layout here going, wow, that's really clean. What happened to all those other languages? What we've done is, as part of creating this tailored data science experience, um, experience we brought an elevated R to the forefront, and we put all the other languages inside of this collapsible thing. Right. So if you want to go off and find your C Sharp or your C++, they're still all available here. So let's finish creating our empty project. And that'll come up, and let's switch over here to the Solution Explorer so we can see our project settings. When we create a project, you'll see here that we also have an HTML page that we auto-generate and populate for you as well. If you're interested in getting to the documentation site for our tools for Visual Studio itself, just click on this link. And let's just maximize this window here. And you can see this is the documentation site that we have um, for our tools for Visual Studio. We have a little introductory video that will also kind of walk you through a bunch of features there as well. So let's go off and close that. Now, one thing I want to point out is that we've created this project and it lives in a directory. Um, the current working directory is something that's very important for our users. And we automatically set the working directory for the R interpreter um, to the project directory. That, that would just make sense. Um, if you look here, in this dropdown, we'll have a list of all of the previous directories, so you can quickly navigate to different project directories as you're, um, as you're working on your um, code. If you're curious about what the full path is, you can just run the standard um, R get working directory command, and you can see that we have this, um, this path here. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to show you this really interesting feature of um, of our new project system. If you're familiar with Visual Studio, traditionally, you always had to explicitly add files to your, um, your project in order for them to show up and be part of your project. In our tools for Visual Studio, we made it so that any file that's in the working directory of this, um, this project is automatically part of this. So why don't we do something where we um, switch over to a command prompt. Let's navigate to this directory, and you can see our files inside of there. Now let's just go off and create a file create a data.csv file. This is probably the simplest possible file that we can have for data. And if we switch back over here, you can see that this data.csv file is automatically part of my project. And when I click on it, I can see a preview of the contents of it um, inside of a uh, Visual Studio editor. So now let's go off and do a little bit of work where we read um, this into a data frame inside of, um, inside of R. So again, we have our IntelliSense showing up. Now, when I go off and type in this double quote thing, I want to pass in 
a file name. Here's a nice little feature that we also have inside of our IntelliSense. If I press Tab between the double quotes, you'll see here that we pop up this mini file explorer here. So when I press Tab here on top of the data.csv file, it auto-completes and finishes that um, for me automatically. I can press Enter, and I can run this command. And when I type D again here, I can take a look at the contents. And you realize, uh oh, you know, it thought that the first um, four parameters here, uh, the first row of the data here was actually um, headings, but instead, no, those are actual data values. So why don't we go back and redo our command? And what I just did here was I pressed the up arrow key so I can rerun my old command, but I want to pass an additional parameter to it. So when I press comma here, you'll see that not only do we pop the um, function IntelliSense again, um, we've also give, highlighted the parameter that you're currently looking at, which is header equals true. And we gave you some help on what that header parameter means. So what I really want to do here is say header equals false, um, which will say, hey, there's no data headings inside of the CSV file. And when I reread this file, you can see here that we have um, all of the data values treated as data values. Okay, now that we've seen some code um, exclusively inside of the uh, interactive window, why don't we add a code or a script file to the project? So I'm going to right-click on the project, select Add New Item, and this is the R script um, um, template that we're going to do, and we're just going to drop some code in here. Now, some of the things that we can do here is I can, again, do something like print Hello World. And you can see that all of the same IntelliSense that we saw inside of the interactive window is also available inside of the code editor. Now, one thing that I want to call out here is I've typed some code in an editor. A very common thing that you typically want to do is work in combination between the editor and the R interactive window. So what our developers do an awful lot of is take some code in here, perhaps select it like so, and they want to send that code that they wrote here to the interactive window. So you can right click here and go send to interactive. And you can see down here that hello world was sent to there and we printed some output. Or, which is much speedier, I can just type control enter anywhere inside of this line. So I can type control enter inside of here and we can go off and send that command there um, once again. Let's do something a little bit more um, uh, sophisticated. Let's write a function. Let's write an add function. And this just simply adds uh, two, two values together. And now I can select all of this code again. I can right click, or I can also hit Control Enter here, and I send the entire add function to the interactive window. Um, I can show that this add function has been defined by going down to the interactive window. And you can see here that when I type add, that that also shows up inside of my IntelliSense now. And I can pass three and four in there, and I can see seven, which is the result I was expecting. Type a little bit more code up here just so you can see uh, another variation on this example. Um, let's go type print add three and four. And now instead of just taking the line by line, I can actually send the entire file for execution to the R interactive window. Um, there's a term for this in R, it's called sourcing the file. So when I right click here, I can select the source R script command here and I can send the entire file to the interactive window, and we see all of the output showing up down here below. So now, let's show a really simple example of the usage of the debugger. So let's set a breakpoint here inside of the add function, and then let's attach the debugger to R, so we start running the debugger. And this will put Visual Studio into an um, into its debug mode, where you see windows like the locals window shows up, um, among other things. And now the last thing I have to do is I now have to tell Visual Studio, hey, what code do I want to run inside of the debugger? Remember that source command that I just showed you? We're going to just do that again, right? So this is essentially a command that says, go run this file. And when we run this file, as you might expect, we're going to get to this print add three, four call here that's going to call the add function and we had a breakpoint set inside of this, so now we're sitting inside of this breakpoint. If I turn the attention to the locals window, you can see that three and four are now appearing here as the X and Y values. So this is just all things that you've come to expect if you're a Visual Studio user already. Down here below, we can see a call stack here, and we can see that the add function is sitting at the top of the call stack here. And 
Of course, I can continue execution by either running, I can step into, I can step over, or I can step out of a function as well. So I'll just press here to continue running, and you can see down here that the final result is seven, right? It printed seven out, which um, was the result that we expected. Now, there are other things we can do inside of the, the, the interactive window as well. So a very common thing that uh, people like to do inside of R is, is generate plots or visualizations. So here's a very common one. If I just type in pairs uh, for the empty cars um, built-in data set, we're going to go off and generate this plot. And so over here in the bottom right corner, the plot window now shows this plot. Now, it's kind of small, but of course, I can tear this thing off. I can maximize it, and you'll notice here that when I maximized it, that what was originally a low-resolution plot with lots and lots of data kind of crammed into there, when I gave it more pixels and more real estate to deal with, we just re-rendered it using all of the available pixels um, on the screen. Once I have a plot like this, I can now export it, I can save it as an image, I can save it as a PDF, I can even copy it to the clipboard, and I can open up something like Microsoft Word, and I can paste it into that so I can now take the, the plots I have out of the thing and, and into the reports that I want to go generate um, for my readers. So let's come back here and redock this window. Now, we can also plot, do additional plots. So let's say I did a second plot. So let's say plot 100. I'm just going to plot this, uh, this graph here. You can see that I have the ability now to go back and forth. So I have a plot history, so I can navigate back through all of the plots that I've generated, and I can pick the ones I want and put them into the report um, that I'm generating. OK, now let's open up a solution that I created previously. Inside of the solution, we have a bunch of really kind of fun um, little demos inside of here. The first thing is, the data set that we're going to be working with. The data set is um, this airports and this routes data set that, um, that I downloaded from this GitHub up here. And airports is a list of the airports from all over the world. So that the first thing we should do is um, read that data set um, into memory. You'll notice here that when I read the airports data set, that the variable explorer now um, has this airports um, um, value in here. I can now click through this thing and you can see here that I can kind of drill in arbitrarily deep um, inside of this. So I can see this view of all of the data inside of the data frame. Now, since this is a rectangular data set that I'm looking at, um, we have a much more convenient view for looking at this, which I get to by clicking on this hourglass icon. When I do so, I now have our table viewer, which will visualize all of the data inside of that data set as a table. So this is a very high performance viewer that we have here. Um, you can see there's 8,107 rows inside of this um, data set. So let's restore this back here. The second file that we're going to read is a list of routes. Um, the routes are um, routes between all of the different airports. So one of the useful things we can do with the route information is um, estimate the size of the airport, right? Because larger airports that have more departures per day are going to be larger airports. And we're going to use that to plot um, those airports with larger circles than airports that have fewer numbers of departures. We're going to use a library called Plier. It's a very popular library in R um, to do a little bit of data munging inside of here um, to generate a new table, airports with departures, which is a list of all of the airports. Um, but we're adding an additional column, which is the number of departures that are leaving from that. So let's take a quick look at that. And you can see here that I have a column at the end here, which is the departure. So we can now see the airports, uh, the number of flights that leave from that airport each day. So now that I have this information, I can do some fun plotting of this. So I'm going to use a, another very popular um, library in R called ggmap. I'm going to get a map of the United States. Um, and now I'm going to plot that data. And when I plot this data, I'm going to plot it such that the radius of the circle that I'm going to plot is the square root of the number of departures. That's just a nice way to, to kind of visualize this. And when I do so, you'll see that my plot window down here below now has a map of, centered on the United States, like, like I had asked, with a whole bunch of circles drawn out. And you can see that larger circles mean larger airports. Right? So I have this nice static plot that I created. And of course, since it's inside of a plot window, I can copy and paste it in another document and do other things as well. So let's redock this. 
Now what I'd like to do is let's say, well, okay, now I understand how I can work with this data. Let's switch gears slightly and let's generate a report out of this. So I'm going to now open up this second file here, which is our markdown file. What our markdown is, is it's a file format which allows a data scientist to combine text that they want, in other words, their report text, with some R code as well. And you know the R code is fully executable. So you can very easily identify a, a snippet of R code, and we even syntax color all of your R code inside of um, um, R RTVS as well. Um, and this is roughly the same thing that we had before. We're going to go read the data from our airport's um, data set. And we're going to filter it now, looking only for um, airports that reside inside of the United States. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at that data in a table. All right, so let's run this thing. This is using another um, R library called data table. And what's cool about this library is when I run this command, you'll see that my default web browser pops up, and the data for the airports now is rendered inside of my web browser. And what's even cooler about this is that I can now type into the search field. Let's say I wanted to find the airports in Seattle. And you can see that as I'm typing here, it's doing an incremental search through this. And I see the, the results are showing 10 different airports inside of the Seattle area. If I wanted to say New York, I can type that in. I can do this as well. All right, so this is a great way of having a much more kind of interactive experience um, for, for visualizing just tabular data um, inside of the product. Now, moving a little bit further, what would be really neat is you saw that that previous map that, that we showed inside of the demo, the previous map was just a static picture with a bunch of circles plotted on. I couldn't zoom in. I couldn't see which thing was which. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to use um, another library called Leaflet. And what Leaflet does is much like what that data table library did, which was to create an HTML5 data table and we render it inside of the browser so we get all of that great interactivity. The Leaflet library allows me to go off and run this code. But now, as you can see, I have a map that shows up inside of the browser. Now, this map's not a static map. It is a panable, zoomable map containing all of the airports in the United States. Now, I haven't done the work here like I did in the previous map to show circles of different sizes. That's coming up later again. But of course, if we just look in here, we can see this is SeaTac Airport by, by clicking on that. right? So it's nice to have this really rich interactive experience um, in creating these kinds of visualizations. Now, I mentioned at the start, like I executed a bunch of code inside of this file and showed you what the code did. But this file is an R markdown file. So I can use this to generate a report containing all of the code that, that executed inside of here. So let's see that. When I right click here and I select Preview, I can preview this, um, this R Markdown document in HTML. So it's going to tell, tell um, our tools of Visual Studio to go off and generate an HTML file that contains all of the code. And it's going to run all of the code inside of this file. And because that code was generating HTML as output, you see all of the same stuff showing up inside of a single file. Right, so here, again, I can do the same thing. I can go find airports in Seattle. And you can see that um, that filters. This map down here is fully interactive. I can use my mouse wheel to zoom and scroll, zoom in. And I can see all the different airports in the United States as well. All right, so this allows me, as a data scientist, to go generate a report. But it's not just any kind of static report. But it's a dynamic, interactive report that I can hand to somebody else, perhaps an analyst, um, so they can go off and, and um, derive some insights from the data that I made available to them inside of this report. Now, at the very end, what I'd like to show you is a particularly fun demo. So whereas that report was just simply a stat, no, it was an HTML page that had a bunch of data inside of it. Um, it had you know, that interactive um, grid, um, which had the, the values in the table, and it also had the map. What if I could build an app, an actual application that shows um, you know, the stuff. So when I think about this data set, I have airports from all over the world. So what if I could create um, an airport app that allows me to filter based on country? And what if I had some sliders so I can kind of filter, you know, um, what airports I want to render on the map based on the number of departures? And this is exactly what this app does. So it uses another very popular li um, library inside of the R, created by the R community called Shiny. And with the Shiny app, 
library, I can go run an app. And the app that I created is called Shiny Airports. And it literally is just these two files here um, inside of the subdirectory of my project. So in the run app command, I'm going to say run app shiny underscore airports. And this brings up my browser. You can see here that not only do I have my interactive map here, but I've also now written the code to plot things in you know, the, the, the diameter of the circle is proportional to the, the size of the airport. You can see here that the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport is, of course, the largest airport in the world. I now also have this filter here so that I can say, oh, let's look at all the airports in the United States that only that have 400 or greater departures per day, and I can quickly zoom down to this. I can turn around and say, oh, let's take a look at all the airports in the United Kingdom. And I now have this map here, and I can zoom and take a look at the information here as well. Right, so this is a great way of writing um, an interactive application using our tools or Visual Studio, using nothing but R code. So if you're familiar with R, you don't have to learn um, any additional code. You didn't have to learn any JavaScript. You're just using a bunch of libraries to kind of piece together um, an application that shows off the data the way that you want to show it off. Now you're ready to go off and create our models using our tools for Visual Studio and operationalize those models using SQL Server 2016. Take a look at the slide for some links for where you can go off and download our tools for Visual Studio Preview. Thanks.